we've prepped them. Now it's time to write the offer. I think to your point, you said, at what price will you be disappointed if you don't get it? If you were to lose it by a thousand dollars, is that going to keep you up at night for the next 10 years? Happy Friday. It what's, is. Going on, what's going on today? Well, <clears throat> you and I talked in advance about what is what is most pressing. And this is something that I ask on coaching calls to try to cut through the noise. I think we all in this business are guilty of saying, I have so much going on. I'm busy. I'm overwhelmed. And we could start with any topic. And the listener, the agent would say, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I need that one. But it's rarely the one that they need the most. And so you and I talked about what's most pressing. And it was lack of listings. Yes. And being able to help buyers actually get their offers accepted. Right. Two biggest points of pain. Yep. So those of you listening, next time you think, what should I do? What should I do? Ask yourself, wait, wait, wait. What's my biggest point of pain? And start there. Um, ignore the noise and start. With That's a great tip, by the way. And so Friday or uh, Wednesday, rather, we covered nine ways to get listings in today's market. Today, we're going to be talking about this negotiation, if you will, how to get contracts accepted. But it starts long before you write the offer. Correct. It starts before you put the buyer in the car. It starts with the buyer consultation that you and I have been talking about till I feel like we're blue in the face going back several months because it's just so important to set the expectation. And like I've said before, like you've said before, the friction that exists, whether it's in real estate or whether it's in life is when expectations are misaligned. I expect something, you expect something different mm -hmm. and that's where the friction comes in. So this buyer consult, really is reducing friction, educating the buyer. So let's start with, or where do you want to start when it comes to winning offers? Because I know it's going to be at the beginning. Yes. So I actually um, have been working on an outline uh, while I was backstage because I had so many thoughts. Um, you and I have addressed this a lot, um, but I really, really want to emphasize this. The truth is the best thing that you can do is to educate your client before anything begins. You have no control over the market. You cannot change the number of homes available. You cannot change the mind of the seller. Those are the things you cannot control. You can be persuasive, you can be a better communicator, and we'll talk about those things. But the first most important thing is that you educate your very own client. So when you have a buyer prospect, and I love it that you guys talked about being pre-qualified, the first thing you do is you have an interview with the buyer. You talk to them about their motivation. You talk to them about why now is a great time to buy for them or an important time to buy. Sure. Really need to get in the mind of them. And then you need to understand both their emotional and financial pre-qualification, right? Somebody says, oh, we're just curious. You know, we like ideas or we're wondering if it's a good time. We're just curious. We're just looking. That's not the best person to be showing during COVID. Right. <laughs> so first things first is, and you need to follow a detailed process, right? And it starts with the interview, the initial questionnaire, which we have available for you on the allegianceway.com. Right. It's funny. I feel like that sounds like a sales pitch, Charlie, but it isn't. It's just convenience because people would be blowing up the chat saying, wait, can I have a copy? So that's the reason we did that for all of you is to make this simpler. So start with a detailed questionnaire and don't forget to ask the obvious things or the important things. Then you do an actual buyer presentation. And the number of agents who have said to me, I don't have time for that is ridiculous, right? Now recently, gosh, it's this week. I had an agent tell me that their buyers are sucking the life out of him. And I said, interesting. Tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. right? He said, well, I'm just showing, 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 showing this one buyer in particular, you know, it's a hard to find property. I've written seven offers, I had them all rejected. I said, how many of those seven offers were basically that the buyer was unrealistic about the terms that they offered? You knew it should be different, but you couldn't persuade your client. Mm, your client right. Realistic. He said half, 
half ish of the seven. Yeah. He knew better. The buyer just wasn't being realistic. Right. But, you know, it takes time. The buyer has to get beaten up by the market. The yeah, they have to learn their lesson. Right. But here's <laughs> yeah. the problem. Uh -huh. That's so unfair. Right. It's like saying my kid just has to get hit by a car a couple times before they learn to not run in the street. You know, that's so not fair as a parent. Yep. There's a now every once in a while we have a stubborn, unrealistic client. Sure. It happens. It happens. Right. But I don't want that to be your go-to. You need to take responsibility for your communication. And Charlie, what you said about conflict arises when expectations differ. I, I always wish we could do a show of hands, like for all the agents listening, how many of you have ever felt when it came to the offer time or the negotiating time that you were negotiating more with your own client than the other side? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You find your th that the negotiation is with your client. Mm -hmm. That means you did not get on the same page in the beginning. Now, don't go telling me about that one time you had this super stubborn, crazy. We all have. Right. Okay. I'm not talking about the outlier. I'm talking about the rule. Yep. And the rule that that expression "buyers are liars" is absolute nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. They told you what they understood, and you heard it the way you heard it, and it's mm -hmm. your. You didn't clarify. So um, have an initial interview, do a detailed buyer process, and we have trainings on those. We have resources right. for you. We've covered this in other shows. But in the buyer process, you have to do a statistical overview. You have to show them the pace of the market. You have to show them what their options are yep. before you get in the car. Don't just start randomly showing properties that they pulled up themselves on Redfin or Zillow. And then when they make unrealistic choices, you sort of talk down to them and say, well, that's not going to work. You better make offer more than that. Mm -hmm. And now they think you're just not on their side. Right. right. So what I do is I show them the list to sell ratio right now. Yep. Okay? The home that you want, there are three of them available. Average days on market is five. And the list to sell ratio is 100 and 1.34% of asking, meaning over full price. Yep. And I say that before they get excited and fall in love with the kitchen. And I say, how do you feel about that? And then I shut up. This is when we have the negotiating strategy conversation. So I talk to them about this. Here's the other thing. Agents have pushed back on me and said, I don't have time for a buyer presentation. Or I asked if they wanted my help, if they mm -hmm. wanted me to explain the process. Yep. And they said, that's not necessary. We bought a house before. Now, that's wait. Not I, that's not how I do it. So what about the agent that says, I do it as we go? What does that mean? We're in the car. I'm chatting them up, right? I'm going over the presentation that I have in my head somehow, right? Okay. And that we're covering it throughout the process. The problem, I think, with that is, what if they fall in love with the very first house that they see and they want to write an offer on it? You've not had a chance to cover 10% yet, right? Right. So let's back up. Are we talking about it's a competitive market? There are eight people calling them back. It's a cold lead. I had to be on my toes. I get it. Yeah. I had to buy a presentation over the kitchen counter of a vacant property once. Mm -hmm. You know, so right. yes. Do you absolutely seize the moment and do the best that you can to convert those leads before someone else does? Yes. But I will tell but you, I think this example is it's a referral from Sphere and they just don't want to sit down and take the time to do a buyer presentation because they think they can cover it. This is not a Zillow lead where I, you know, you do LP mommy, you get out there, you show the house, right? No, no, no. This is just the agent that thinks, I mean, honestly believes that they are serving their clients at a super high level by doing this presentation, because it's not a presentation, mm -hmm. right? This buyer presentation over this length of time. And I just, I don't know how you do that when you're riding around in a car and you're just doing it from, from memory of things, you know, how do you keep track of what you've covered and what you haven't and with who? Well, I think we need to step back a, a little bit, get a little bit of distance from this, because I think, you know, we're kind of debating something a little bit more uh, granular. The truth of the matter is, I think most agents are overlooking how big a deal it is that you buy a house mm -hmm. and how long it took the agent to learn how to do this. Right. I remember the first contract I ever presented. It was terrifying and it was mm -hmm. terrible. Okay. And I had been through real estate school yeah. and I had practiced before, but not on a real person. Right. So how many weeks, days, weeks, or years did it take you to become competent yep. 
contract details. How long did it take you to become cognizant of the effect that the market has on your ability to purchase? Mm -hmm. I'll bet years. I'll bet you were a newbie out yep. there running around yep. happily writing contracts and cash and checks, and it's, you still weren't a stats person. I'm not a stats right. person. Yeah, I've, right. I've said that. So I, yeah, here's what we need to recognize. Your client is the adult. It's their money and they have to make informed decisions. They're not just along for the ride, right? So right. if you don't educate them, then they're not empowered to make wise decisions. And when things get ugly, they're gonna say, Amy, what should I do? Help. And I'm like, um, I can't choose for them, right? right. My favorite line is, we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. we talked about what would happen when this arose. Yep. How right. do you feel and what do you want to do? Yep. And then I get to shut up because they know they're just a little concerned. But right. I'm I'm referring them back to we've covered this, yep. right? So now they're like, okay, good point. Yes. Now the best, most concrete example is right now when you're competing like crazy, right? You yep. see a house, you yep. love it, you're, you're you're a little bit panicked. Like right. I those of us who do work with buyers, it is a little sad to, to see them under so much pressure. I would love oh, yeah. to have a little bit more breathing room to right. make choice. Yeah. yeah, They're freaking out. You're freaking out. Are we going to win? What should we offer? Amy, what's it worth? Well, who knows, right? Prices rise because of supply and demand, right? right? So price home prices keep going up because there's more demand for homes than there are homes to buy. So it's like, fine, I'll offer more, fine, I'll yep. offer more. Yep. So we just have to say to them, well, no one knows exactly where this home will ultimately be valued. It's going to be valued based on the demand for the home. We have, we're competing against multiple offers. You have to offer what you're comfortable with. Right. But think about everything else we've seen and how will you feel if you miss it by three grand, five yep, grand, right. and you're back in the car looking again, and the market is steadily marching up, right? So I show them with numbers. So this is the other thing to your point, Charlie, about just stick them in the car and mention a few things here and there. Most of us are very visually driven. We're visual mm -hmm. learners. And I've had agents say this all the time. I told them, I told them it was competitive. Right. That's nothing. Right, when you show them, there are three homes currently that meet your criteria. There are 45 under contract in the last 15 days. The list to sell ratio at the time of contract is more than 100% of asking, how do you feel about that? Now they know, Yep. I see the house I love, I don't get to wait four days to make a decision. Right. And I don't get to come in 10,000 low and see how it goes. Yep. Right, so that's what I would say to your, should I just drive them around and mention a few things? Um, I would create a standard process and we have that to share with you on the allegianceway.com and practice it. Well, yeah. And it also sets your level of service, right? And it, it eliminates as much of the misaligned expectations as possible. And then it's going to lead to raving fans, hopefully, and referrals from those people. And I think winging it, not having a process or a procedure that we do for everyone likely leads to less referrals. People might be satisfied, but they're probably not raving fans. And there is a big difference, right? We all have the client, the past clients that refer us all the time. And then we all have ones that it was a perfectly fine transaction, but then we've sure. never gotten a referral from them ever. Yes. Right. And yeah. I think we just somehow assume that, oh, I guess they don't know anybody buying a house. No, not really. They forgot about you. Right, because your service wasn't amazing, and frankly, because you probably haven't followed up. But that's a discussion for another show. Well, um, not necessarily, right? This is the reason to follow a detailed buyer process every single yes. time. You will make the process shorter. You will not be complaining to us that your life is being sucked up by unrealistic buyers. You will have less stress, they will have less stress, and you will encourage enthusiastic referrals. Oh my goodness. What, what three better reasons to commit to becoming skilled at this? Right. Okay. So we've got the questionnaire. We've got doing the buyer consultation, going over the stats. What are the days on market? Can I sleep on it? You can, but you got one night, right? You're not sleeping on it for a week, right? Sure. Um, sure. What's that list price to sales price ratio? What contingencies, if any, can you expect to have? So can you have a home inspection or does it need to be for informational purposes only? Or in some cases, you gotta have the home inspection before you write the offer, 
right? Which is painful for some people, right? But there's there are home inspectors out there that are doing the kind of these quick and dirty systems inspections. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're in and out in 30 minutes. It's not super detailed. So you know that you're not writing an offer on a house that has a foundation that's crumbling, right? Um, because in, in a lot of markets, you're not gonna get a home inspection contingency. Interesting, okay, good point. And you're not even gonna get it for informational purposes only should you win the house. There is right. no home inspection. If you want an inspection, you're doing it before the offers are due, which is a little nutty, right? You can have dueling home inspections going on at the same time while the house is still active because no one's written their offer yet. Yeah. And that's what's happening in a fair number of markets. So we've discussed all of that with the buyer. They're prepped for this yeah. could come up. So they're thinking mm -hmm. about it and they're not surprised. Wait a minute, right. you mean I have to pay $500 for an inspection before I even write an offer? I mean, I didn't even get the house. Right. And then they're stressed. But if you talked about that three weeks earlier during a presentation, then like to your point a minute ago, at least it's, remember we talked about this. We were hoping that this wouldn't be the scenario that came up. But unfortunately, it looks like it is, right? Because the listing agent said that they're expecting like 10 offers. If right. we want an inspection, grab your ladder. We're going in there tomorrow, even though uh, offers aren't due until Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. um, what's next? So we've prepped them. Now it's time to write the offer. I think to your point, you said, at what price will you be disappointed if you don't get it? If you were to lose it by $1,000, is that going to keep you up at night? for the next 10 years. Um, and in my experience, I've never once had a client, and I remember like before the financial, the you know, the, the great recession, like literally writing offers on the hood of your car, right? It's like, we gotta do this now, you gotta sign it. Because there was no electronic signatures, you could fax back and forth, right? But that wasn't great because then you couldn't read it, right? You know, when it got, so there was no time to sleep on it. Um, prepping people for that. And so where are we in the process now? It's time to write the offer. How much do you want to go over? What's the escalation clause? You've gone over escalation clauses if this is something in your market already with the buyer, mm -hmm. right? You've had the discussion around an appraisal and can you waive the appraisal? Can you make up the difference between the appraised value and the contract price? All this is like pre, so you've discussed it, right, Amy? This is, you, I, you and I discussed it a month ago, but now it's like, I found the house of my dreams, it's time to write. Right. What's, what's how, how does that look? How do you bring up these, the terms, right? We talked about this stuff, now it's time to make some decisions. Right, I think you're making a, a really good point that I want to clarify and it's something that I said earlier, and that is how long did it take you to learn your job? Yep. You did a buyer presentation. You told them about this stuff once. Right. So please tell them over and over and over. The person who says, I bring it up in the car, please do. After, right. you After the buyer job, presentation. Right. right. So yep. I would say, go through a detailed presentation. Give them a copy of the home buying guide. Yep. There's two touches. Talk about it as it comes up during showings, right? And sure. then bring, up, bring it up again at the time of, of offer. Um, you really have to be detailed. Charlie, I appreciate you bringing up all these things. And m different markets are different. Um, yep. I'm grateful to say we are not waiving appraisal contingency in our market. Um, it would be next to impossible when you have 30 showings in two days. Mm -hmm. It will be under contract in 48 hours. If people are on the lawn and they get right. 15 minutes in the house. Yep. Nobody gets an inspection like that yep. right. during that right. period. Right. So, you know, you may say we will not ask for anything other than health and safety or whatever as mm -hmm. a clause. Um, but anyway, I'm grateful to say none of my clients are buying homes without inspection. <laughs> that just sounds good. Terrifying. Yeah. But there are other really brave terms you can offer. And this is what you need to talk to your client about is price is not the only factor, right. right? Price is not the only thing that matters. The terms of those other contingencies do matter. Can you cover the appraisal gap, right? That could have tremendous value. Um, can you offer a lease back? When yes. I helped my daughter buy her house, I've shared this story because there were so many details. I offered a full month lease back on us. Right. They and right. that for a month on us, yep. Yep. but the, like, we didn't not inspect the property. We were out there many times making yep. sure we knew what we were getting, right. but we were generous in our terms. Yep. Um, so then I think we we talked to them about that. And Charlie, what you said about, will you be upset if you lose it by a thousand? The problem is in most cases, they won't know. 
They right. won't know right. by how much they won yep. or lost. Yep. So here's what I say to them. You need to make the offer that you will not regret having been too high or too low. Because what will happen is what if they win? And yep. then they say, well, that was too easy. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, right. right. We went 10 over. We went 20 yep. over. Do you think we paid too much? Right. So I tell them in advance, make the offer that you will not look over your shoulder and say, well, yep. maybe, maybe we swung too hard. And right. I am that person. I like sharing the story of helping my daughter buy a home because basically I was buying a home. Uh, she's young. I put mm -hmm. it to the down payment. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, had, I had those same regrets. Like, yeah. did I? Did I? Right. Did I knew though I didn't want to lose. Yep. And I went high and I went strong and I won. And I have no idea if I burned through eight grand that I didn't need to because it right. was higher than the higher yep. that I needed to go. Yep. Every time I visit that home, I know I made the right decision. This market has been accelerating. There were not a lot of great choices. It was a mm -hmm. great home. I did everything necessary to win. And I, over time, <laughs> yeah. second guess my decision less. I'm sharing that because your clients are going to second guess themselves, right? So oh, you yeah, and and, and you know, and, and and like an, if you can get away with an escalation clause, then that limits that a little bit, right? You know, you're competing with somebody, but a lot of markets, it is best and final offer, and you're, it's just like a shot in the dark. It is what it is, and there's nothing you can do about that if that's how the listing agent and seller wish to review those offers. It's it's painful, but it's true. Okay, so I have one more tip because I see we're very short on time. Sure. We're still talking about value and we're talking about price. and We're talking about regret. Yep. So I had a, a relatively new agent say to me, and she's not skilled and she doesn't know what to say, but it was still a pretty challenging question. She said she's having buyers ask her, is it a good time to buy? What if it's the top of the market? What if I can't sell it in a year? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. None of us have a crystal ball. Right. First of all, so don't pretend you know that the market is going up or down yep. or something. You don't know. Okay. So the thing that I always ask, and this is authentic, I truly am a consultant and I'm there to help people buy or sell when it's the right time for mm -hmm. them, not when it's the right time for me. <clears throat> so I say, interesting, are you planning to sell in a year? Right. And if yep. they say yes, I'll say, please don't buy one. Right. Right. Seriously. Like yep. we have a ton of military turnover in my market. Yeah. Somebody says, I'm going to be stationed here for two years and I'm moving. I'll say, don't buy. Right. I don't know where the market is going. Yep. Now, some other agent will laugh at me and say, Amy, you're an idiot. I had a client who made $50,000 in the last two years. Okay. Is this Vegas? Like, right. Yeah, right. I promise yes. that Correct. happens every, every 24 months. So unless they plan to live in their home for a while, I will say, okay, well, then I think you should reconsider. Honestly, I honestly mm -hmm. would say that it's not about me. Um, but if you're planning to be in the market for a long time, and my daughter was, she bought a starter home at a premium price in a very hot market, yep. and she's not going anywhere. 10 right. years from now, she'll feel yeah, it. She'll be good. Yeah. Right. She yep. bought at 26 instead of 36, right. and she will feel happy. Yep. So I want you guys to be better consultants and make sure you're giving your clients uh, good advice about the long term.